2020 represents the 160-year commemoration of the first Indian indentured labourers arriving in this country. How is the community faring in post-apartheid South Africa? We are going to journey into the heart of the city of Durban, as well as to some of its surrounding suburbs and townships, to meet some of the Indian community's leaders, academics, students, activists, lawyers, entrepreneurs and artists, and to hear their stories and viewpoints about heritage, identity, discrimination, the abuse of power, intercultural relations and social cohesion. Indeed, there are many, many cases of abuse and torture and oppression that we need to look at. But I don't think the idea of putting this exhibition together is about being bitter. The idea of putting this exhibition is that when we walk out of here, we celebrate our lives and honour those who made it possible. So you've got differences uh, because of religion, you have differences obviously because of class, huge differences because of age. So older Indians have a different sense of community to younger Indians. Differences because of sexual orientation. There's a, a really thriving gay Indian community. So I think we need to be careful that we don't use community as something which is exclusive, but rather something which is inclusive and embraces all who want to call themselves Indian. And I've been thinking about this, and I thought, I, and I, I've come to the conclusion at that time we had a common enemy, and that was apartheid. Mm -hmm. And we made friends right across the color line, yeah. and we would lay our lives on, uh, on, the, line, on yeah. the line for each other. Yeah. And that was it. And once apartheid went, mm -hmm. strangely yeah. enough, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. the polarization started. Yeah. Women played a crucial role in the struggle against oppression, and this hasn't always been acknowledged. The 1860s Heritage Centre has created a special exhibition focusing exclusively on women activists as part of a process of rewriting history. There's this whole displacement that you face when you're a teenager and you, you ask yourself, am I an African if I'm not black? Am I an Indian if I'm not from India? With regards to coexistence of both the Zulu and uh, Indian culture, here in Emmanuel Cathedral, what we're experiencing is that we are all family. You know, we are a family serving humanity together. To what extent do our stories, our histories, exist in the imagination of ordinary Britons? If you look at that, the answer is very little. Very little. You know, it's funny. My parents, like so many Indians, are now moving to a formerly white suburb. But the other day, a white couple moved to Rioja, and two black families moved here last year. Now this side is that side, our side is their side, and their side is everybody's side.